It's a Friday morning, 6 a.m., as preparations for the journey begins with arrival and parking of the bags in the famous drone car as we await others to arrive before we set off for the journey. 7 a.m. shop, the journey begins. Along the way is the famous equator in Buama, the first stopover for any safari for picture moments and getting to know each other as drawing plans for hikers begins. It's Muchomo time in the business town of Lukaya after crossing the Katonga River. River is another stopover to take a piece each for the much roasted meat, chicken and gonjas. The journey continues. It's time for another viewing point of the deepest lake in Uganda, second to Tanganyika of Tanzania in Africa. The journey continues. It's yet another stopover at the red corner, Kanaba, the sharpest corners from Kabale to Chisoro town for more picture moments as we also get a chance to meet with the roadside baboons waiting for passers-by for some eats. The journey gets more attractive. 6 p.m. we arrive at Lake Molehe Gorilla Lodge where we will be spending two nights for the two-day safari. It's registration and checking time. It's time for dinner served at 8 p.m. It's day two. The day has come. 8 a.m. It is the much awaited time of hiking Mountain Mohavura. It starts with briefing. From the mountain guide, the necessary requirements before ascending to the mountains. Amanya Nedobozi with Mansen Pewa. Together, we are going to start a program here. We are going to go to Alilo. We are going to go to Zimbabwe in Echitundu. Uh, ku TV ko tukulambuliza ebifo ebyenjawulo kakati ni munange nako rwalero uh, tugenda kubanga tukulambuza olusozi oba tu hiking olusozi lwa muhavula e, nenga wano wentu si sawa zino uh, muhavula base camp noza wano kutandikira okubanga tugenda kwa buko olusozi olugedo luba delu wanvu okuve Kampala paka mu district ya Kisoro tugenda kubanga tukulambuliza ebifo ebyenjawulo oba wetu hiking olusozi lwa muhavula Iranga wano tutuse sawa zino, uh, yege ndo kupa intandi kwa yoku wa kompu yoku wa mbukolo sozoro. Duwamvu, uh, baluba abad doko wano, boba sobo doko wanga wama nyati tuge ndo kupa ngatukula. Sisi ndu cha, cha, changu uh, na ye kansu bide nti iwe tunafu na kasera, tuja kupa nga tukulaga ebifu ebi enja ulo ebili kulu sozoro. Enu yebesu tutandi kila, iranga masu ganga wali, wali offices, wage ndo kupa nga tufuna briefingi, eh, unakulale kukati tunama kupa nga tuwa mbuka. Juki ya unakuromu kaga, Atu watu kulambuza Egwanga, Uganda. Atu inaba nafe, baja kubanga watu nyumiza. Baja kubanga tuwa geda kuna watu bulide, enteka teke nungabu yefanana. Na chi, eche tagisa, omuto kubanga, kula activities zezi neze nja ulo. Habi nji, hebi singa kao, tugenda kubanga tubi kulechida, tovao.
is one of the 10 national parks we have in Uganda, but it is the smallest. So being the smallest does not mean that we don't offer several activities. It is very unique. Uh, we normally say it's where gold meets silver. So the gold means the golden monkeys. Then silver, we have silverback, which, is, which are the mountain gorillas. Okay? So in Mugahinga, we offer several activities ranging from gorilla tracking. We have one group here, um, which is called Nyakagezi, gorilla group. Uh, it has nine members. Nine out of nine, we have a young infant born in COVID, not yet given a name. So, <laughs> not yet. We normally give names according to the features on them and the behaviors, how we identify them. So, out of nine, there are three silverbacks, uh, two adult females. We have juveniles, two, then sub-adult, one and that infant, making it nine. Then we also offer the golden monkeys. We have the two groups. One is Kasinji under research. What we mean research, we are still habituating it. But you can do a habituation experience with us. It is called Kawachondo group. Then we also have the Kasinji group. They are more than 50. The golden monkeys, the males have the Donsokara, then the females have brighter color. And they are rare species. You can only find them in the Virunga Massif. The Virunga Massif is composed of the, the Volcano National Park in Rwanda, and then Virunga National Park in Congo, and then Mugahinga Gorilla National Park here in Uganda. In the whole world, that's where you can find the golden monkeys. Okay? Then we also offer mountaineering. Mountaineering, we, out of eight, in the Virunga Massif, volcanoes, we only access three. So the three, where we are on the base, this is 2,381 meters above the sea level already. So when you do Mohavura, Mohavura, it is 4,127 meters above the sea level. So when you summit, you are able to see a crater lake on top of Mohavura and incredible views of Rwanda, Congo, and Uganda. So Mohavura, we share it with, with Rwanda. When you summit on the top, you are both on Rwanda and Uganda, on top of Mohavura. Uh, Mohavura Rokare, it's, it's a local name. It means a guide. In case you are lost, the mountain will guide you. Because of its height. Okay. Then in the middle, we have uh, Mount Gahinga. Mount Gahinga uh, is in the local name. It means uh, a stone pile. The way you have seen Kisoro, when they are cultivating, they normally pile stones on the side so that they can get land, enough soil to grow their crops. So when they are piling stones, they are making that mountain, which is Gahinga. So Gahinga, it is 3,474 meters above the sea level. And on top, uh, there is a beautiful crater swamp. It would be a lake, but there is a channel that takes water outside. And this water, uh, people of Kisoro benefit a lot from this water. That's where the source of the water supplying these people come from, on Mount Gahinga. Then we also have uh, Sabino. Sabino, uh, it means like when, when you grow old, you start losing up some of your teeth. So this is co called old man's tooth. So when you lose, you create some gaps in your tooth. Then after those gaps, they make those peaks. There are three peaks. The first peak, we share it with Rwanda. The second peak, we still share it with Rwanda. Then on the third peak, it's where the three countries meet. Uh, and we, it's where the first pillar of Uganda is, on Mount Sabino. So when you summit Sabino, you are both in three countries without a visa. 
that is that is the future which is on Mount Sabinho. So you are most welcome to Mugahinga Gorea National Park. I will also offer the Batwa Karicho Walk. The Batwa did a, they were called nomadic. Uh, they would not have where to settle from. Bushmen, they are short. But by now we live with them together in the communities. But they used to survive on wild meat, wild honey, and also wild yams. All roasted, not cooking, because they would not have breads and saucepans to cook such a kind of food that they would survive on. So they, when you do that experience, there is a big cave which is called Garama in this park. So when you do that experience, you are able to move in the cave. It is very deep, like 37 meters moving inside the cave. So that's where their chief used to meet them. When they raid crops in our communities, they had them in the cave and would not find them. So that was a hideout for them and meetings. So th those are the activities we offer in Mgahinga and actually bird watching. Uh, we have uh, we have rare species of birds like the Renzori Turaco. We have the Kivu ground slash and beautiful sand birds here in Mgahinga, which are rare because our altitude is higher than other parks compared to Buindi and Lake Mburo. So there are some rare species of birds in Mgahinga. So when you do bird watching, you actually enjoy uh, you enjoy your talent like if you're a good birder and have what to present and show the world what we have in Uganda and Africa in general. So that's about hiking, but we normally prepare our guests to have uh, good walking boots and rain jacket. This is a rainforest. Uh, packed lunch, uh, lunch boxes, enough drinking water. And then this mountain, hiking it, it would take us five hours up, then three hours coming down, depending on our pace. And we should also know that when the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. That means uh, it will be cold up. So if you have gloves, you can use them. If you have warm jackets, you can also carry them with you. Okay? So that's what we normally make you prepared. And this is your day. Well, normally what I tell my clients, it is your day. Don't rush. We are a big team. I have the co-guides. If you see that the pace doesn't favor you, go on your pace. Because if you rush, you will not make it. Hiking, it is normally always a challenge. But you still say, I will do it. That's when you reach the top. Uh, when you reach higher, you start the oxygen. Sometimes it becomes less, depending on how, how you have been. Uh, the mask, when we are hiking, it worsens it. Only what we do, we give two meters to each other when we are hiking. So that when you're breathing or when you're coughing, you should not actually cause anything to your fellow because of this period of COVID. So why we normally, why we normally carry our SMG yes. machine guns? In this park, we have, uh, we have uh, you know, forest elephants? You know, in Africa, in the whole world, we have two species of elephants. We have the Asian species and the African species. And the African species, we have two categories. We have the savanna and the forest elephants. So in these uh, rainforest uh, areas, we have the forest elephants. They are smaller than the savanna ones. And also we have wild, these mountain buffaloes. They are very dangerous. We don't habituate them as we do gorillas and, and monkeys. So they normally come up in our ways. So what we do, we scare shoot. But before we alert you, or we first dodge them. Because of being steep, when we are at them, we dodge them and we see where we are going, we cannot manage because of the varies. We scare shoot for them to run away and then we continue our journey. That's why we have, we are not going for a war. Uh, we have now constructed the ladders. So we have improved the ladders after this, the, the first hut. 
we reach somewhere and we start ladders up to the second hut and even to the last to the summit when we are doing the last part of the mountain there are also improved ladders we should also have a positive mind when you have, find like it is rough you should keep positive you reach somewhere where it is okay and then we continue we can't tell because like my team yesterday we did another activity not gorilla tracking that's all can we start if we are ready we are also ready and we shall start in peace and come back in peace not in pieces okay <laughs>
we are at 3116 meters above the sea level and we are focusing to summit to the top 4127 meters i'm happy everyone as we started has made it to here to this point uh the team is doing well and we are looking forward to see different zones as we are moving uh, it is a little bit steep but it is going to be in zigzag way and when we reach uh, in 3500 uh, 550 we shall start uh, ladders improved ladders so we shall have a chance to wa to have what to hold on the sides and no mud <laughs> on ladders so we shall be clean and this will be nice we are all I hope we are all ready for this yes. and we shall do this. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, to Charlie na Munang one or two say uh what to gambi and at least to now to two seco, na or get to Charlie Wanvo. Uh and Jagala Kubang at Jogeda could never muko to the tumbler nabo. Uh to bully or gain balu sans batia, na chiche bagazako, but it was super maso jabalaga. Amanya. Amanya, Mr. Vans Alex. Akagendo tuwa kata ni sevulu unji. Atuwa tani kide wansi. Sawa zawa de bili leda chikana. Weta tani saa kagendo kano. Pula mpula, nga gaidu ya fe boya tu gambie. Tu ino ukutambulila kupesi ya fe. Tusobole fe na ukutuka wagulubulu unji. Yela tuze mpula mpula. Nga wetu liindako wa nafe. Na hawa tulese nga wewa tuliindako. Tufunofo wetu umuliramu. Nga kano kenyini ketu seko. Nituwe yenge layo maso. Hetu subiro kutuka bulu unji wagulei. Ouzo chesa wazino? Well, pulira bulu unji nyo. Uwe mulu ni guango gusose. Ate, I'm very excited. Kwa jaga tuka wagulei. Nino kutuka yo. Chona chechiri. To ya zizanyo, uh, kafuna mula na ya jato vule, uh, ngeri jia ulira, uh, olugendo lusanzo ucha, amanya? Amanya, wampita job, olugendo... Job ya ni? Job shaka, omu wala ampi, geze zako uluge, olugendo teruga delu wangu, e, tu sanze mobu zibu zibu ulusi ulira akatumbe kakuluma na ingo ino gumi nkiriza, atendo obu nyo govu, te walu tumide mwana, Unyo govu bonji, na ye tuliba marilivo kumalako. Eda, Uganda nyuma, wana ye mje mje, no wanyuma, mwemudia umewase. <laughs> Kari ni. <laughs> ah, muna ye baulide, ah, njaga lafu na ye ato mshalo, mlala, na ye atubulide. Ye avisanza atia, <laughs> atubulide, ingiri jia uvila mwesa wazino. Amanya? Amanya, nze ahabwe patience. I have a patient, so so to choose a home with no single ticket or blue, which much so worker or to know the chicho with the sours, you know. Or remain single ticket at Uganda. Go game, Mazima. Nay, or so the door to gain that doom, Eliza. When you go bungee, nay to us as a it's my first time to do this mountain, eh? but I feel like I can do it. A bit I was scared because it's a uh, high. As you can see, I thought I wouldn't make it, but fortunately, I made it to the first stop. So I think I'll finish up. And I'm lucky to have this team. They're giving us the support we need. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm going to take a look at the video. I'm going to take a look at the video. I'm going to take a look at the video. I'm going to take a look at the video.
pesi mi okupa nga tucharife na uh, ibi ntobila banga vita bwepita ambula uh, maso gange uh, nina uh, sidiamu itaka si itineja kuleka abirenga atu nyonyola uh, chichari akena kupa nga tubulila bichi ibi etagisa omuntu okupa nga uh, wala mpoluso zolufana nga lunu mahaflo wala ilo tupali tukeza kwa kupa nga tulu ambuka waguru tuwebe chichiri yo uh, na yote tusopede kupa nga itu tuka waguru ure mbele nchi uh, kade uh, tika sopede kupa nga tu katu mala ukubanga tutugena wagulu uh, manya gafi uh, wampita joshua tinamasko zenkora ne uganda wildlife authority uh, ndi one of the guides mugahinga goria national park uh, nsanyi sokubela wanu ukugela kona wanya uganda buona wategele chetu ina mo uganda nsi afe uh, tuli proud ukubela mo monseno ina national parks enonji nebio unisa mo uganda Katingeno mugahinga tuina mountain hiking ndi musanyi fulero mbadene group nene a uh, e hikinga katibobanga kugenda ku hikinga tenso ko kugamba nga munya Uganda uwo mutiye na veyo bwero ngoze mu Uganda tuba twagara obere nga oina kumazi agamara e chilara obere nga oinemere uh, a no mubirigo uliranga Uri ready, chintu bo chikoro vera, uri ready, uche uri mumubiri, uyagara chikora. So, we, again, we normally say people should know that hiking is a challenge. And a challenge, you have to take on a challenge. Even life is also a challenge. So, when you're hiking, uh, you are taking on a challenge. What you go through hiking, it is what you go through in life. So, you know, Mount Mohavura, uh, 84,127 meters above the sea level. Timu yona, nsanyifu, barawa wanawa sanyifu. Chewa koze, ne chewa funye mu, ukutambolo mu, lino tujeta insko, like a forest. Ndawa budi omua ina akasimai, kachira wika bridge mu, budi omua chee ulia. Katichenga amba, budi omu, jari, asoro kujeno, kura wachetu ina mugahinga, oma utumavura, Osoro kujja, no hikinga, no rawa kubisore vera twinanga gorillas, twina ne golden monkeys, um twina ne abatwa. We call them pygmies, short men. Whatever how cultures are in Uganda. Kati twina cultures nyinji, wariwa abampi, the baita pygmies. Mm. So they normally survive on bush meat, wild honey, wild ha yams. So biona boje no mugahinga o mu Uganda yafe twina binji atobo bo maze kuri nyaruno rusozi muhavura soro kuri nyaruwenzori soro kuri nyane eregon byo ne bisozi webiri ne ba guides abarundi na twe unyisa uh, we are very always very happy and pleased to see some people coming and we thank our organization Uganda Wildlife Authority and Uganda at large uh, which allow and give discount to Ugandans so that they can also take on the path. Because Ugandans should also feel what, what they have, feel proud of what they have in their country. So I love that and I'm very happy. Ngalero, uh, even if it rained on us, it was very heavy, but I see everyone is very happy about the experience. And they will also tell us about how they have experienced this in their lives. And we pray that they should come back again and bring more, more, more people to come. What kind of food would you recommend uh, for someone going to hike? And what kind of quantity should someone put on his body so that he can hike? Uh, when you're starting, it is always warm. But when you reach up, it is cold. So we normally recommend you have warm jackets and also the rain jackets. So with food, we normally recommend dry ration. Either a sandwich, um, and also bananas, and also biscuits. If you have glucose, you can also have glucose to mix with water, so that you always have a sip when there is a stopover. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, for what to take a day, I guess it's a kukubanga to nyonyela. Chichi tagisa kukubanga o hiking obo wala mpolso zimu havula kan student binjo bize ne tukenda kupanga itufuna ku malobo zigaba tubanafe betu betu patambe nabo bageze ko tuvira experience ya bwe gabo yobade fanana
katutole mkatono tovao how are you i'm very good thank you what's your name my name is evia from israel oh, all of us all of you from israel yeah. what's your experience about mohafra first thing you have an amazing country beautiful places uh we had a, a hard hike but it was very beautiful a lot of views uh natures animals i enjoyed it very much my legs are a little bit hurt because we have small mountains in israel but you have amazing mountains and it was a great experience would you want to do it again again no maybe some other mountain but uh i recommend it very much you should try renzoli thank yeah, you very much thank you thank you very much hello hello your name Amit. Amit. Ms. Ali, tell us about your experience. Okay, so it was, yeah, it was <laughs> a very difficult hike because we need to climb 1,700 meters and go back. Mm -hmm. But the, the nature is very beautiful. We can see a lot of things like jungle and crater. Mm -hmm. and it was unique. It was unique. Yes. Thank you very much. How are you? Good. Very your name? James. Yes, from Israel as well. It was amazing experience. We had a bit of rain at the top, so it was a bit tough. We missed the animals. We wanted to see more animals, but you can never know what you will expect from the nature. And besides that, everything was awesome. Very recommend. You should come here. What else do you like about this activity? I really like it. It's not that long, like people say. People say it's like so long, but it's just seven kilometers. And the climb is not that hard, so you can just go and come and enjoy it because it's not so bad um, and that's it I think. Did you like about the rain? The rain was uh, tough but it was nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah those are some of the activities uh, that happen at uh, Mohavura and these are some of the hikers who have been with us today uh, who have been hiking. <laughs> wa kabiri kutemba mount muhabura erukshango muri kisoro twatandika okutemba ogo mushozi shaha ibintu neda chikana ni itano za kasheshe twaba twasiro bwire konka imbera yo bwire niyo yategana samuka akantu kaki so twabasa kwika ahiguri yo yo mushozi ine hina hitanka ho mama ni konka range analysis guide witu Mutu wa batu inikatimu. Ya mpami sirizanti yuna atemba mpaka enjuri hii atu kwa sizo muhanda. Hati chindu kubwende za ama nya Uganda ni mbeta mwina mwijemu. Mutembe mshozi murambure Uganda ya anyu. Uganda yuna neyitu mwijemu jirambure. Eee, tukwa tanisetiyo. Sengazo businji. My name is Bentik, Bentik Nigwam Jisha, and I'm the CEO of African Brown Mud Safaris, or Wetwandi Senga, Omukuruwa Company, Jivaita African Brown Mud Safaris. African Brown Mud Safaris Company, Ekola Mbiavulambuzi. We offer a variety of activities. We do both domestic tourism and then the foreigners and stuff. So, but this time around, Twasaze Okutamblan. It was a success. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, it takes preparedness. So you have to really prepare from scratch. Because uh, we, the two operators, we always have packages and we shall put them out there, advertise them for clients. So it takes preparation for you to put it into consideration. You must be interested, to do in, interested in doing these activities. We shall give you a number of packages and you look through and if you want to go for a particular activity you have time to save up and pay for it so yes preparedness is the first thing and then the other one uh, i would say otherwise i would say interest or interest or love for the activity is the first thing then preparing for it is the other one we cut across uh in uganda we have activities like this one which we are coming for was a mountain hiking, hiking Mohavura. Ma, this region has a number of them, so we have Mohavura, Sabinho, and uh, uh, Gahinga. All these are in the volcano ranges. 
and uh, sorry, the Virunga Ranges, and uh, we did Mahavra this time round. It was a really beautiful one. Sometimes we go for national parks uh, like uh, the Wild National Park Safari, national parks like uh, Kidepo, uh, Buin, um, Kidepo, Queen Elizabeth, Mburo. Those are the ones that normally sit in cars and we drive you through. But this one is physical, so you you're literally doing less of driving and more of your physical walking. This one is physical. Uh, if we're doing, say, Kidepo, I would, I would don't really tell people to do a lot, but when it comes to hiking, you really have to be fit. Mohavura is uh, 4,127 meters up there, and as much as it sounds like only four kilometers, it is, in terms of walking, you could use roughly a good, an average hiker would use about five hours to go up and about three hours to get down. So you really see that someone really needs to be fit. The terrain is rough. Uh, there is a lot of uh, rocks and stuff. There is sliding if the rain fall, uh, falls like yesterday, how it did. Luckily it got us coming down. So you must be physically fit. And when we talk about physically uh, being physically fit, we don't talk about going into the gym and carrying weights. This is more of someone who's able to run, say, about 10 kilometers on the road. So it's more of uh, having a pace. You can keep up with the pace as you hike up. And I would really recommend people doing this. A number of problems cut across, like you said, which is really true. Uh, being uh, not a familiar ground for Ugandans, I'm saying not familiar ground for Ugandans because tourism is perceived in a rather foreign thinking. There are not so many Ugandans that do this. Yes, the numbers of domestic tourism have been increasing on a, on a daily, but still not yet appreciated. And a number of uh, challenges you have on the side of two operators, I can put it on the side of the two operators and at the same time on the side of the tourists. On the side of the two operators, you have lots of cancellation. Many people have the will to do activities, but they always complain about things like uh, uh, prices and stuff. And I think how we come about, how we try to overcome this is trying to do, make our clients aware way, way before so that they can pay in installments, they can save up for these trips. Ugandans have a tendency of waking up and thinking like they will afford a trip the next day and they want to go, which is why most of us think these safaris are expensive. Uh, <clears throat> For example, this safari could cost you, on average, about 600000 But if we advertise that in about two months, that means it, you have roughly six months to save up for that. So if a client was to save for this particular safari, he would have time to save, say, or pay in installments 100000 per month. I mean, yeah, per week. You would look at it as uh, little money, but... If you decide to pay 600000 at a go, that's very expensive. So that's why most of the Ugandans tap out. And then the others, Ugandans don't really do prepare for trips in terms of uh, your time management. So you, we, 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 we as two operators have decided to come up with a, a travel, a year travel plan where you would look into our packages annual packages, different months and different times of the year. And you could come up and say, I would choose to do, say, this safari, which is in December. And then you have the whole year to save up for December. Or you can plan and say, my leave, my annual leave at work will be maybe in May. You look through our travel plan and see if the, tra if the safari package in May favors you, then you could save up for that. We're trying as much as possible to raise the idea of Ugandans can afford trips because I know very many Ugandans love to travel. Very many Ugandans want to visit to these beautiful places in their country, but what stops them or what hinders their travel is uh, uh, money and then time because we don't have a lot of holidays cutting across our year. So when you look at it and say, I can try to draw a planner 
for my clients and my clients who have a time to just look through and say I'll choose on the particular safari, then it gives you a chance to prepare and enjoy your safaris too, minus having that whole issue of too expensive safaris or I did not even have time to do the safaris that I wanted to go. We want to try to as much as possible to avoid the, oh, you guys left me, you did not tell me. So that's why we're doing a, a travel, a year travel planner, and we shall always be putting it out there on the social medias, marketing it out to you people so you can access it, look through, and see what you can plan for the whole year that favors you. Um, Mantri Safari is, it's just like I said, it takes, indeed, it takes the availability of clients. Because we know there is will for clients to do travel, but then there's something that hinders that travel, hinders the will, or the act, the putting the will, the, the will into uh, actual touring these places. So, uh, what really will help us is if you can try as much as possible to push the clients and give them a chance to prepare for them in time in advance. That's what I would think. And the prices of most of these activities is not really high. Yeah, uh, Looking at uh, tourism being very, very transparent because all the prices are accessible. For example, Ugandans know the prices of national park entrances. They know the prices of the lodges at which they will be going. All these prices are very open. So it doesn't really... You cannot really say the tour, the tour operator has made it expensive for us, but it's really preparation. If a tour operator can give his packages out there, definitely the prices, how he prices the, the, the packages simply tells you there is a particular target, there is a particular economic target, uh, economical target, market he's trying to look at. So, <clears throat> so if... Uh, I say maybe, because I could do this trip at 600,000, and I can also do it at, say, 1 million. That means I would have put in a different session in the, in the target market I'm having, in the market, in the market I'm trying to target. So it's just literally it goes back to preparation. It just goes back to preparation. If the two operators can put the packages out there, then the clients are there, because we know surely Ugandans love to travel. Uh, there is a lot of Ugandans on social media. Trust me, most of the Ugandans that would manage or afford a trip, most of them, if I say it in percentages, 90% or 95% of the Ugandans that can afford a safari are on social media. They are on Facebook, most of them. There is on uh, Twitter, they are on uh, Instagram. So this is mostly where we put uh, our... Uh, advertisements so you have flyers going all over you have uh, trying to influence this so that people can see it you promote these advertisements you have YouTube and then the other thing is TVs you use televisions uh, to market these packages for the clients to see them and get to participate a lot a lot, a lot. And it has both affected the tourism industry, the positive way and the negative way. The negative way is definitely there's been a lot of cancellation. People have not been work, working and uh, I really anticipate seeing very many tour companies moving out. Some companies may not even come back, which is really absurd. But uh, the positive side, which comes back to us Ugandans, is uh, in the recent past I have seen an increase, an increment, or an increase in uh, domestic tourism. Previously, most of the tour companies were targeting foreign uh, foreigners, on foreign foreigners on uh, foreign residents, because those those are the ones who could afford these trips. Ugandans could afford the trips, but I think we were not doing enough into marketing them. So this time round, I see a lot in, in increase in domestic tourism, and that's the positive side. Many two Ugandans are involved in touring. We've seen people move on Bunyonyi, they have gone to Mohavura, they have gone to Kirmanja, I mean, sorry, Renzori, they have gone for chimp trekking in Chibale, they have done gorillas in Bwindi, they have done these national parks like Depo, Maction Falls, Queen Elizabeth, Mburo. 
they have even visited these communities like the Manyatas in Karamoja. So they have been to CP. Those are, CP is, I think, one of the destinations that has really, really gotten a big turn of, turnover in domestic tourism just in this COVID time. So yes, the positive thing I would think about Corona that has come out, come with COVID is increment increase in uh, domestic domestic tourism. Um, <clears throat> Is it only to the local tourists or even I can touch the government itself? Um, in tourism at large, because we have very many stakeholders in tourism, you have the government, you have us, the tour operators, you have the tourists themselves, uh, service providers, and I think it cuts across. My message would go almost to touching different stakeholders. The government has played a big role when it comes to trying to promote tourism. Most of the uh, roads that lead to these touristic, uh, touristic attractions have been improved. However, we're looking at, when I say improved, is mainly the main roads. But when you look at the roads that lead us straight to, say, the national parks, uh, yesterday we were doing Mohavara, and if you came with a car, you would feel every time a stone touches the bottom of your car, it hurts. And such roads, if they were improved, because you earn money from tourism. If the government invested in, say, improving these roads and stuff, you would have done us a very, very big favor. To the tourists, um, we really appreciate you guys. We really want to be with you, and we look forward to working more and more and more with you. We try to, so much to give you what, whatever there is that you can enjoy. Uh, if it comes to the prices, the prices are negotiable, the prices are really transparent, but we try to in, uh, encourage you to save up, save up front. Rather than making abrupt plans, try to save up up front because it will help you not feel that very big pinch on you. You will enjoy your safaris, you will enjoy the leisure time you will be having, and the pocket will not be really hit hard. Two operators, um, I want to thank very many that have tried to market Uganda. It's what we can do, because uh, you don't expect to uh, milk a cow that you don't feed. So the best way we can feed it is marketing, marketing Uganda to the best of our abilities. There is a lot of potential in Uganda in terms of tourism, and we have lots to market. However, uh, now let's try as much as possible to deliver what we promise our clients. Because at the end of the day, when clients are satisfied, trust me, we shall be having more and more and more and more of them. As long as things don't work out so well, then definitely we're going to start missing out there. But I recommend most of the tourists, um, fellow tour operators. I recommend the government for the good work it has done. And I also look forward to having more Ugandans involved in tourism. I think it can cut across. And service providers, the service takers, we're doing good. The Pearl of Africa is really shining and uh, we can only embrace and take it on with a high love. I cannot, there's no day, single day I don't wake up and I feel like traveling. Uganda has lots and lots and lots and lots of things to offer. So we can, there's a lot on your basket, you can always keep picking, yeah. Nessie me ofogera for Namwe, a manager in the Elton Gideon Bamwider, a tour guide uh, and uh, a freelance working for different companies. To us as they walk with Jaco, uh, hiking a Muhavura, Nemi Kwano Jaffe, to have new experience and Nuji, to again and hiking a Muhavura, and our experience here at Densu for Kamala. Uh, it was a good challenge for ourselves to us as they to to Jay. Uh, to hiking, kuba chesindu chetu fuli ya chetu waga lokola uh, Eda tuwa chifunye mnyo na andi agadde Oku, oku recommend inga uba Oku wategeza ni namu mwandize ni muko le chesindu chesimu Because uh, we have a lot of things to see, to learn and uh, to enjoy as Uganda I would like to tell you guys that you should also uh, challenge yourselves in ways of travel or different other ways to see beautiful things, learn, travel and meet people.
My name is Zainab Nalubega, an operations manager at Uganda Culture Lodges. Uh, basically, where we are now is Lake Mulehe Gorilla Lodge, one of the lodges under uh, Uganda Culture Lodges. The lodge is located in Kisoro, just a few kilometers from Kisoro town, and basically it's 30 minutes drive. Uh, it's in the southern sector of Windy, so for clients that want to do gorilla tracking in the southern sector, that is Mugahinga, uh, Rushaga, and Nkuringo, it's really a great spot for you because it's in the center, just a few miles or kilometers drive to the tracking centers. So basically at the lodge we have 14 chalets and each chalet has two beds. That is a single bed and a double bed. Hey, Gorilla Lodge, you can do a canoe boat ride on Lake Mulehe. You can do a community visit to the nearby community. But for entertainment, we normally offer that. At a, it's a complimentary for our clients in the evening after the gorilla tracking. Depending if they want to, it's always a, it's a choice. And then uh, there is birding. Since we are located on a lake, we have so many birds around. So in case you need a tour around, we have someone to help you out. Uh, you can do, uh, we can take you for the Batwa culture experience. That is an extra cost. We take you to the nearby community of the Batwa and they tell you about how the Batwa lived, their way of life, how they have survived all this time. So basically that's it. Uh, we are happy and we shall be happy to welcome you again. It was a pleasure hosting this entire team. And I call upon all two operators to always choose Lake Mulehe Gorilla Lodge as their best, opportun their best accommodation in Kisoro. We are ready to welcome you and we are ready to serve you well. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, it's tough. Mm -hmm.
It's been a wonderful journey for us uh, to be part of uh, this experience and I hope uh, with time we shall be bringing you a lot more of such safaris. Uh, this is where I tell Ugandans that Uganda, the part of Africa, is the best place to be. Once you engage yourselves in traveling, everything becomes perfect for you. Uganda is so beautiful. Uh, Uganda has a lot to offer for you. Especially in this period where we have uh, lockdowns, where we have uh, COVID, uh, you should embrace Uganda and be part of it. Uh, hiking isn't a, a small thing, but I urge you to go and do hiking everywhere, national parks. You should be part of this and uh, encourage others to go and do safaris around Uganda. Uh, stay tuned for more programming. Good night.